I'm having an antenna tuner problem on my Kenwood TS2000. They just announced that they are discontinuing this radio, and there's been lots and lots of them out there. I've looked online, seen lots of videos of uh, people actually having antenna tuner problems, but never any of them offering any kind of solution or any ideas to lead you in the right direction to find it. Now, I was a Kenwood tech for many years. I'm retired now, but I was a Kenwood technician for 22 years. And I'm going to see what we can find on this. I'll show you what it's doing first, and you can see if this is your problem or not. I'm going to bypass the antenna tuner first, and I'm going to put it in SWR here. Okay, you can see the SWR. When I hit send, the SWR is... Well, let me go to CW, I'm sorry. Hit send, SWR is nice and flat. One-to-one -one SWR. So this thing should tune this really easily. But I'm going to hit tuner here. It seems to get close sometimes, but it just runs the same pattern over and over and over again. You see, it just won't tune, okay? All right. So I've already opened the radio up, of course. Now, there's a few things that we can look at. One of the first problems we consider is possibly that if we follow it out here, our tuner in and out is, let's see here, tuner in and out should be right here. This is our tuner in and out. It comes up here and goes up here over to K3 relay, okay? So K3 is... This smaller relay down here, this is K3, that tells it whether or not to bypass the antenna tuner or not. So, possibility K3 could be bad. So, I had tested that by bypassing and going straight to an antenna port with my um, antenna tuner out to make sure that maybe we weren't getting something not closing right in K3 causing it to not sense proper SWR or something like that. But even at that, you should still get a close match or it should even tune it as long as it's showing something. So my next check was to check these relays here. Just basically by feel, you can tell if each one of them is clicking in or not. And usually the capacitance isn't, isn't that you, know, you you can get close with the capacitance and not be quite as hard to tune. On the other hand, your inductors, your coils, these are your relays for your coils, okay, on the antenna tuner. And if you're not getting the right amount of inductance, it's going to be a little more critical than the right amount of capacitance. And you can't feel these relays engage. So you, you don't really know if they're working or not. So... I went to the schematic here on, sorry for the shaking, um, let's see here, that's the, that's the filter board by the way, this is the PA board, this is the relays for the coils here, um, so uh, let's see, I can't, uh, I really need glasses on right now, okay, if we look at it, we can see an inductor on each of these up here that the relay is adding. Each time the relay closes, it adds an inductor. So I think possibly one of these relays here isn't closing and giving us enough inductance. So first off, I couldn't tell if they were closing or not. So I made sure that on this line here, let me find something to point with. This line here, is a constant 12 volts going to one side of the relay. And this uh, integrated circuit here, which is, let's see here, which is right there. I'm not gonna touch it, I don't wanna short anything out. But So I checked the outputs of that, and it is going to ground. It shows 13 volts on the outputs. If you engage the antenna tuner, you can see them pulsing to tell that that chip is working. Uh, engaging these okay 
and then of course I check the diode on each side, which is part of the input circuit to uh, these relays. You can see right here you have a diode and a capacitor. What these do is, where this is actually a coil, uh, it kind of acts like the coil in your car. Once you close it, it charges, and when you open it, it discharges. So they put a diode there that prevents that from discharging and putting a voltage spike to your radio and killing it. So that's what that is. Uh, but that's the purpose of the diode there on that, by the way. But anyway, you have 12 volts on one side and your signal on the other side. See, here's your signal from that chip coming into the relay. And here's 12 volts. So each one of them I check, there is 12 volts there. And then when you... Uh, engage the antenna tuner, you can actually see it pulsing and dropping down on each one of them. So I know they're all getting the signal. So my next step was to figure out how to bypass these. So what I've done over here on the ends of the coils, you can see all it does is on uh, this particular setup here, what it does is it simply each relay closes and adds one relay to close and add this circuit. The next one will close and add this circuit. The next one will close and add this one. And then this one, this one, and so on and so forth. Now, this is the very last one that gets added. Right here. Uh, this last coil here. So, what I've done, I've gone in here and shorted each of these with a little jumper. And then when I finally get to this last one... I'm seeing a big change. So what I'm gonna do, this is kind of crude, okay? This is just a little jumper that's gonna give us a little bit of uh, contact closure between these last two here. I'll uh, see if I can do this without getting too much in the way here. So, well, I'll just do it and then I'll show it to you afterwards, okay? All right, here, all right. So basically what we've done, we bypassed this last relay. Now, you know, looking at the schematic, of course, and at the parts diagram. Um, I'm sorry, let me turn this. Looking at our parts layout here in the parts diagram, this is the relay. It's going to close and add this coil to the circuit. Now, when I'm jumping this across, it's, it's a possibility it could be either this relay or this relay but you know in, in a sense I'm bypassing this this coil but going from here to here is you know pretty much the same as is bypassing the relays so I've got that bypassed I've got the coil connected and let's see what our antenna tuner does now okay we've got tuner so, that gives you a little bit of an idea of what to look for. Um, I, I, you know, I know it's not a bad coil. Those don't go bad. I mean, I look at them. They, they're not going to go bad without you seeing that it's bad. Um, odds are the relay, it's either going to be this relay or this relay. One of these two here is not closing. Now, I could probably, if I could get easier access, I could go to this side and jump her from this side of this to here, and that would effectively tell me which one of the two it is, whether it's this one or this one. But, you know, this radio is one of the 30 million serial numbers. So it was made in 2001, so it's getting old enough that I think I should replace both of these. So that way it eliminates that completely. But, you know, that's our problem. One of our relays aren't kicking in, and, uh, you know, so, I hope this helps. Um, I really don't know what else to, to say on it. Um, if you was in a pinch, I suppose that you could just solder a little jumper between the two and uh, hope that you know you need that one coil in, uh, in every one. But, you know, every, every tuning situation, I mean. But, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's just, you know, these parts go bad. Um, the radio works beautifully other than the antenna tuning not tuning 
but uh, you know, we'll, we'll even go up to a different frequency here. Let me put it on FM so it moves a lot faster. FM will give us full power out if we like. But let's go up to 29300 where that is an FM channel. We'll tune here. And we got tuned. Now just to prove that it is tuned, we're gonna go to, we're still on SWR. Antenna tuner, you can see the antenna tuner is engaged. And we're gonna hit send. And it is tuned. Now, I'm gonna bypass the tuner and show you that my antenna is not resonant there. It's close, it's a 1.5. But with a tuner engaged, it, it does work. So, you know, hopefully this gives you a good idea of what to look for. Um, you know, I this is probably going to be one of the worst repairs on, on these radios because, you know, unlike the filter board here, it's a small board you can take out, you know, other than the connectors. This is the, the PA board. It's all part of the PA board. So this entire board's going to have to come out of here. So, you know, a lot of screws. Um, may want to replace some uh, heat sink compound as you do this. Uh, that way you got a good, clean, fresh... Uh, you know, uh, heat sink compound on it when you put it back together. And, uh, you know, just make sure you take plenty of pictures and notes to make sure you plug all your connectors back in correctly. And, uh, you know, make sure you turn everything off, unhook your power before you uh, start trying to take it apart as well. Um, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments if, uh, if this helps you or not, or if you've got any other questions or anything, uh, this is Tim, KR4MK. I uh, hope this uh, helped you. Bye.